Yeah, I think the first half was, was obviously nice and clinical, especially if you look at the previous teams that played um, in this specific uh, stadium uh, with the, you know, the humidity and the way the ball after 20 minutes normally gets a bit uh, slippery. I thought we were nice and clinical and decisive, and I thought that's what we asked from the players. So, uh, especially with a bunch of guys that hasn't played a lot uh, the last four or five weeks, I thought that was really well done. And only conceding one penalty in the first half, obviously then the second half started off really bad in a way that we considered five penalties in the first five minutes. So overall, I thought uh, a solid performance, uh, especially in the first half. Uh, Rossi, a lot of back scoring in the first half. I think all the tries were backs. Was that something that you targeted or it just happened because it was a big forward display against Italy? Did you want to give the backs a good run today? Uh, it was really not something that we planned, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I think obviously every week we do our analysis on, on, on all the teams that we play against. And, and uh, you know, we treated Canada with exactly the same respect that we treated Namibia and all, all the other teams. Um, for us to be grouped in the same pool as um, New Zealand, we knew that all three of the other pool games would be really important. So even be before we got to the World Cup, we did all the homework with all the different teams, and uh, we just thought uh, where we could target um, you know, Canada would, would be in the areas that we did. Uh, and obviously, because um, I know, know Kingsley really well, I coached a lot against him when he, when he coached the Dragons, uh, they got a certain style of, of, of playing and defending. Um, and yeah, I, I thought the way our backs exploited, uh, maybe the space they did give us, was good. But uh, you know, it, it, I wouldn't say we planned on just scoring with the backs. Uh, I actually thought our, our forwards weren't as dominant as we were uh, maybe against Namibia and, 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 and Italy. So yes, well done to the backs, but that wasn't something that we said, gate backs, you score more tries than the forwards in this game. Rasi, you mentioned the backs, you, now you mentioned the forwards. A guy like Ergis Neyman tonight, um, he ran like a center and he offloaded like a back or like a sunny ball with him. Just your thoughts on his performance? No, he played well. Um, and I guess it's, it's um, one must always see everything in context. Uh, the, the stiffer the opposition is, the, the less time you get for decision making, the higher the pressure is, the, more, the higher the stakes is, you know. So it's always. In a game like this, especially with a team who gets a red card against you, you know, uh, they've got, they can't have the same line speed. They've got a forward down because they're 14 men. So uh, uh, I don't want to take anything away from Erge because he was phenomenal. He was fantastic. I thought he made great decisions. He didn't always look for the offload. Uh, he, he sometimes just carried really hard, which was really hard before he tried for the offload. So I thought he had a nice balance in his game. But, you know, then again, we can't look at this specific game against Canada and say, you know, uh, the moment you go into quarter-final mode, so you play against New Zealand, England, the pressure and the decision-making and the timing is, is totally different in a game like we play tonight. So, yes, he was fantastic, and that's why he's always been in the mix in, in the A side, if I can call it that way. Uh, and it was good to get him through an 80-minute shift today. I thought he contested well in the line he scrummed well, he mauled well. So, yes, he had a good performance. Rashi, just a word on Kobe Zainak scoring a hat-trick and also did anybody really push the case for, for spot in the A team? Um, yeah, Kobe's obviously, um, I think he's, everybody knows his X Factor. I mean, I, I know, knew his dad well and, and we all know the moment he sniffed uh, some space, you know, he's got exceptional speed and uh, he's a guy that didn't get a lot of game time so far with us, especially since I've been the coach. Uh, he's never been in the mix, just in the World Cup, you know, even in the world, and build up to the World Cup. Uh, he wasn't part of the test matches in the rugby championship. So um, he's a guy that, you know, when he gets space and speed and he's got good anticipation, uh, um, you know, he's away. And I think, I think it's the fastest hat trick probably uh, that I've seen at the World Cup. I'm not sure if it, if it is, but it's, it was pretty fast. Uh, and, and yes, he's it's, it's very opportunistic. So we're fortunate to have three uh, quality um, nines like that, and, and I'm glad he did well. And I think between him, Faf, and, and Herschel, uh, we've spread the workload really nicely now, and luckily there's no injuries currently uh, with them. And then your second question in terms of the guys put up their hand, uh, I think out of the squad of 31, currently we don't have a player that won't, will not be available for the playoffs. That's, that's a 
we've got a clean bill of health, so that's nice. Uh, but uh, we'll go and look at this game and, and look at the individual things and see who are our quarterfinal opponents. Of course, you know, if it's Japan, they bring a different game. If it's Ireland, they bring a different game. The one is aerial, the one is phases, the one is nice, speedy, fast guys, the other one is forward dominant. So, and if it's Scotland, can still be one of those teams. So, uh, it's difficult to say, yes, this guy put up his hand, because uh, the opponents will, will play a big role in how we will select our team. Rassi, who do you prefer playing against in a quarters? <laughs> uh, I think that that question is so loaded. Uh, you know, if I, if I say one thing, I'll be in trouble, and if I say another thing, I'll be in trouble. No, um, um, Hendrik, uh, I know the Irish players so well, uh, and, I, and I can tell you they are professional. They've been under pressure in, in under pressure situations. They handle it well. I've seen them uh, perform well in Six Nations when nobody gives them a chance. Joe is an excellent coach. I know the individual players well. One or two of them stayed in the same street where I stayed in Limerick for for almost two years. So I know them individually very well, and, and I can tell you they'll be a big threat. If you play against them, I'll be nervous if you play them. And I said a few weeks back when we played Japan, I really think Japan is a much bigger threat than people think they are. Because uh, if you look at the way they played in the Pacific Cup, I think that's what they call that cup, they smashed teams like Fiji and, and, and teams like that. They just totally beat teams like the you know, USA and those guys comfortably. And they beat Ireland the other day comfortably. So they, they're really well coached and, they, and they're good in these conditions and they will have massive support. So if you have to pick between those two, I'm not quite sure uh, uh, who will be the, the easier bet. I, I really don't know. And then again, Scotland can still sneak in there. And now with the weather conditions that, or the typhoon that might be here this weekend, that even makes it more interesting. So we'll enjoy this next two days off. Watch the weekend game for, for a lot of interest, do our homework, and, and then just buckle up and, and prepare as well as we can for the quarterfinals. Just, just behind and then Maria in the middle and then back to the front. Rasi, is there anything you've learned from your players tonight that you were perhaps unaware of? Um, it was good to see France go another 18 minutes and, and, and handling the pace and speed of, of, of Test Match Rugby because I, I think sometimes it's tough to come from a French league. Although I always knew France had the talent and the desire and the competitiveness and those kind of things, it was good to get to see after a proper 80 uh, and uh, playing the standard of rugby that I know he can play. That was a, that was a, was a positive again. Uh, um, and then, you know, it was interesting when we had four flyers on the field, when it was Damien and France and, and Andre and Elton, how, how we spread the ball really wide under the same conditions, which was slippery. We could really move the ball around. Um, so, um, yes, I, I think we learned a lot. But again, the moment your decision making gets cut down about with quick line speed and pressure and, and quarterfinals, semifinals, things change. You know, so um, there was some really nice, good things to see. I thought our lineouts again. I think we haven't lost the lineout ball so far in, in, the, in the World Cup. Again, with Skulk playing hooker this this game. So I think we're in a good position when it comes to personnel. But from now on, it counts for nothing. You know, if you lose the next game, you're out of here. So, so we must prepare really well. In the middle, just in the middle. Uh, there's a microphone on your left. Uh, may I have a question in Japanese? Okay. Ah, uh, 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 so I only switched it over later to the uh, English channel, I, uh, the first part in, in Japanese. Can you, can, you ask the, <laughs> can, you, can you ask the question again? So I only had the second part, sorry. So can you ask it again? Sorry? Uh, sorry about that, my mistake. すみません。えっと、準々決勝まで10日間10days空くことのメリットと、あと、ま、日本のことについて研究したりとか対策したりとかいうのをま、始めたりもしたりしてるんでしょうか。Yes, we definitely do. Uh, we started them before we came here because we played Japan, obviously, uh, you know, I think four weeks ago. Obviously, we started them in depth. 
uh, um, in from tomorrow we'll study Ireland, uh, Scotland, uh, and, 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 and Japan. Uh, the players will be off uh, tomorrow and, and, and the, the day after, and, and they'll get back on the horse on Friday, and then we'll start preparing physically and, and, and obviously analysis and, and share that with the players. But uh, uh, I remember clearly in 2011, we prepared for one specific team, which was actually Australia, and then we got Ireland in, 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 or the other way around, for Ireland, and then we got Australia in the quarterfinal. So we won't make that same mistake. We'll prepare for all three teams uh, from, from tonight. But the nice thing is that we did actually play Japan quite recently, so we'll put a lot of time in Japan, uh, Ireland, and also obviously then Scotland. Uh, yes, so we will do a lot of work in the next couple of days. No, no. Um, Rossi, just looking at the try that Canada scored, were you disappointed to to concede a try and also from first phase ball like that? Obviously, second phase after that first crash. Um, the one thing that Japan, uh, Japan um, uh, Canada does do well, uh, 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 if I can say from the tier two nations that we play, they're, they're probably the one team that have a, has a lot of structure on, on, on attack. You can see a clear shape uh, which we've analysed uh, with the players where they get into a decent shape uh, after a few phases and, and when you get them a little bit of go forward, I think it was it against Italy, they could have scored, could have scored three, four tries where they knocked on the ball over the dry line, uh, the one lock. Uh, and so, so they're a decent team when they get go forward ball. So yes, it's disappointing to give a, um, a try away, but also on the other hand, you know, that they deserved it, it's well worked and on the quarters of God. So you can't always keep a team out, sometimes it's just they, they, they worked it well. The Jacques will be disappointed and the players will be disappointed, but you know, sometimes they, they, they just d d deserve it. We've got time for one last question. Um, I could actually ask this of other of you. Um, it's the, the gap, because you've got a big gap now, 12, 12 days until the next game. And Sia did mention, I think it was yesterday, that um, sometimes when you come back from like on Super Rugby, when you've had a bye, you, you're quite rusty afterwards. Is this an advantage for you to have this big gap, or is it a disadvantage because a lot of the other teams are still playing quite intense games this week that you might be playing against in the in the quarterfinal. Uh, I will let, 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 let's see. I also maybe answer the question, but but from my point of view, um, Gavin, uh, is that we we will prepare start on Friday and and, and prepare for both teams and, and do analysis on both teams and watch the game together. Uh, obviously, the, the the games played this weekend. Uh, when you analyse those teams and watch the games, and then it's quite exciting to analyse teams and then watch the games together to see who you're eventually going to play. So I guess we'll make a little bit of a of a thing about it, to analyse them and then watch the games together. Uh, that, that's a little bit of excitement around it to do it that way. So I guess that will spice it up a little bit. And then from uh, you know, Monday we'll have a normal test match week. Uh, no, it's a little bit longer. But yes, uh, we've been together for 16 weeks. You know, together for 16 weeks, so uh, I think we know how to handle each other and how to get past four-week turnarounds, ten-day turnarounds, you know, rugby championships. So we're quite used to each other and how to, to, to manage our time, so, so we'll be okay. Yeah, no, um, I think um, we're very excited as a team. I think it gives us an extra week to prepare and obviously to watch the games. And coach had already, all the manage, management and coaches had already started looking at the teams. So us as a players as well, so we'll be watching and we'll probably get some information and we see if we see the same pictures. And I think the thing about uh, this competition, in Super Rugby, you've got another opportunity the next week. From now on for us, if you don't pitch up, you, you go home. So, and, and we keep each other accountable and honest at all times. So, but yeah, we're looking forward to watching the guys and, and see what we can prepare and what we can do for them next week. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That brings a close to the end of the South Africa post-match press conference. The mix zone will be opening shortly. Thank you, you Rusty. Thank, Thank you, Sia. Thank you. Thank you.